It was 3.30 p.m. and Aiden and Hardy were looking at the messy Night Owl security room with gloomy faces. On the floor, there were a dozen or so unconscious security guards. From the scattered objects all around, they could tell it must have been a fierce struggle. From the surveillance, it looks like it was a security team infighting. Several security guards took advantage of the opportunity to sneak attack and then took Taylor out of the group building through the back door. I've already arranged for a pursuit. Hardy shook his head, his face shocked. Taylor, he must have paid off the security guards. Aiden frowned and also shook his head. I'm sure he's prepared for that. It's not likely anyone will find them. A shame. Hardy frowned with anger. It would not be easy to find out Taylor's hiding place. It seemed impossible. Aiden swept his eyes along the floor and then realized something. Looking down, he picked up the decoy red notebook. Why are you picking that up? Isn't that a fake notebook? Hardy came up to him and sighed. It's a pity that we don't have a police dog, or we could find him by the smell on it. What Hardy didn't know was that while there were no police dogs around, there was an even more powerful force available to them. Aiden was holding the notebook in his hand, and his eyes were darting around the room. He was already calculating his next move with the system's help. Triggering basic navigation ability, locating the target. After positioning, the virtual map has been generated. Thousands of pieces of data materialized into a three-dimensional map. Tall buildings, busy traffic, people coming and going. The whole world, only in Aiden's mind. A little red dot flickering on the map moved rapidly toward the industrial district. I'll find him. Hardy saw a flash in front of his eyes, and by the time he had registered it, Aiden was gone. In the blink of an eye, he was out the door and far down the hall. Hardy and the guards all wiped their eyes and looked at one another in a daze, speechless. As the cold wind rustled, the sky and the earth began to smell of ozone and then raindrops fell. It seldom rained in winter in Arkland City, but it had twice that winter, and the weather forecast has not predicted it either time. It was really strange. The rain kept beating on the window of the white knight and was swept away by its silver-colored wiper. In the heavy rain, the white knight flew like lightning in the traffic. Boss, the red light ahead, Frank asked hesitantly. Gun it, Aiden commanded. Frank gritted his teeth and stepped on the gas pedal. With the pleasant roar, the white knight broke through the curtains of rain to speed down the road. The other drivers on the road were scared by it. Cars stopped, swerved, and sped up to avoid the speeding sports car. One car braked too hard and spun out out of the road. The whole intersection was a mess. Hey, watch it! Are you looking to die? Disgruntled drivers heckled as they passed. In the heavy rain, the drivers stretched out their heads and pointed to the white knight. But the car didn't stop for a second hurtling on down the road. After the sounds of sirens, a man yelled at the white knight with a bullhorn. This is the police. Stop the car and pull over immediately. Boss, come on! Looking through the rearview mirror at the police car, Frank immediately had a headache. Aiden stayed deadly quiet in the back seat. After another intersection, there were two police cars stopped in front of them, blocking the way of the white knight. The police car in the rear also caught up. There was no way out. Get out of the car. With a rapid knock on the window, a young officer in a raincoat peered into the car. The window gradually rolled down, revealing Frank's slightly embarrassed face. Are you the owner? Your car has violated traffic safety regulations. Please show me your driver's license and registration, he said. Frank didn't reach for a driver's license, but pulled an odd piece of paper from the glove box. What's this? I don't have time to mess with you right now. Please show me your driver's license. He said with a frown. No, please have a look at this, Frank said with a smile. The officer narrowed his eyes and looked at the contents of the paper. His face went slack. The title written on it was not what he had expected to see. FBI, it read. He didn't need to read any further. He stepped back and stood at attention and respectfully saluted Frank. I'm sorry, but we were pursuing an important criminal. When we catch him, we'll bring him to your office for a proper detention. Frank smiled apologetically. The officer didn't dare to say anything else. He just waved his hand and informed the blocking vehicles to withdraw. As the window rolled up, the officer caught a glimpse of the man sitting in the back seat. Even his very glance was enough to send a chill down his spine. That episode didn't delay Aiden for long. In order to save time, Aiden had had no other choice but to use his government connections. He hoped the move wouldn't get him in trouble. 
But Aiden couldn't manage to care that much, because the little red dot, which represented Taylor, had arrived in the industrial district and was getting closer and closer to the outside of the city. At that time, Aiden was not sure whether he could keep up with his navigation ability if he left an area he was familiar with. As the White Knight sped along, Aiden realized that the dot had stopped somewhere. I think they're at the south bank of the river, he told Frank. Aiden did not know why Taylor had stopped, but informed Frank to speed up and get there faster. The police force must have gotten special instructions, because the White Knight's road was smooth after that, and no one came to intercept it. Just as the White Knight was getting closer to the red dot, there was a bridge to cross at the junction of the industrial district and the island district. If outsiders wanted to go to the island district, they could drive across the long bridge and avoid having to take a boat. Under that bridge, several figures were quietly standing on the south bank of the Sugar River, which was a branch of the Arklands Bay. Take it. The code is 123456. Taylor threw a bank card to the security guard in front of him. Thank you, boss. Several security guards excitedly took over the bank card and said their thanks with flattery and smiles. With that reward, they never had to worry about money for the rest of their lives. They each had planned to flee Arklin City after the job ended. So, boss, we'll just leave you here? Go away, Taylor waved impatiently. Although the men had saved him, Taylor also had to pay them a lot of money. That was enough to make him irritated on its own. Taylor didn't have a good attitude toward them. The security guards didn't care about that, though. They just happily left the riverside with the bank card in hand. <laughs>